<clears throat> Party people, Tony Rowe here. Super excited for this one. We are doing a uh, 1D4, D5 repertoire against the London system. We're using what I think is the most up-to-date and aggressive options that I could find. I have been homesick since Thursday with an illness that is not COVID-19, but sure felt a lot like it. I tested three times, negative three times, but man, did I feel like crap. And I felt like the only thing that would make me feel better was vaccinating the world against the London system. <laughs> and so here we are. So let's get into it right away. I think this is going to end up being a very long video. So what is the London system? We should talk about that a bit. And we should also talk about the move orders because nowadays the London system, because the Queen's Gambit declined, has become so hard to break down. You know, guys like v Vladimir Kramnik and uh, others just making bolstering this queen's gambit decline people have moved towards the london system and as people have moved towards the london system and other stuff the level of nuance required ha has gone up people have become more and more clever with move orders and little details here and there that it, it's become harder to understand the london system overall but okay so let's let's just look at two bishop f4 here so what's the idea um, first of all, white just makes a developing move, plans to go e3, and wants to get the bishop out of the pawn chain first, but I think the one thing that sort of characterizes the London system more than anything else is this sort of systematic development of all of the pieces kind of in this, in this triangle, and the usual, uh, declining to build central tension with c4 there are some some variations in some people who will still go e3 knight f3 and delay c3 a little bit and in some cases go c4 especially if black usually brings out the light squared bishop which might allow like you know queen b3 to be more annoying but it usually white is setting up what basically amounts to a reversed slav defense with e3 c3 Bishop f4, same thing um, it, as white going d4, d5, c4. Black goes e6, c6, bishop f5. Very Slav-like uh, structure, just reversed. Okay, and there are really two kind of move orders you have to watch out for. There's d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4. And there's just bishop f4 immediately. And we'll also talk about knight f3, knight f6, c3 which is uh sort of a recent choice by Li Kuang Liem in his chessable lifetime repertoire something that i really was not familiar with at all until i started doing research uh into the london system this weekend by the way i checked out yeah the the chessable lifetime repertoire by Li Kuang Liem the two most recent books by geez Sedlak and Alfonso Romero Holmes, I think, um, winning with the London system and the agile London system is, I think, what they're called. And I also check the chess publishing archives, my database, everything is engine checked. So this really is like a very modern sort of up to date repertoire against the London system. Yeah, and so th those are the main move orders that we have to be concerned with, basically knight f3, knight f6, bishop f4. And there's actually a further breakdown here. So we're going to go c5. Again, going into this reversed Queen's Gambit declined or Slav kind of formation. And after e3, knight c6, there's two moves. The, the most classical and historic one is just to go c3 and build this triangle immediately. But it turns out that queen b6 uh, is sort of irritating to meet in this case because queen b3, c4, queen c2, and then there's this sort of very well-known move now, bishop f5, which... Hits the queen, you can't take because b2 is hanging, then a1 hangs, so white has to go here. And then as we'll see in uh, the chapter on uh, this this variation, that there are actually many moves here that are good, I think. But knight h5 to me seems the most straightforward and has a lot of upside. But e6, bishop e7 is also possible. Or e6, h6. Possibly even h6 right away. So... Once people started to realize that c3, queen, b6 was not very good, they started to go instead knight b to d2. And the point here is that 
the attack on b2 is quite a bit less significant with the knight off of b1 and indeed in this position queen b6 white has started to go d take c5 because queen b2 rook b1 queen c3 bishop b5 gives white uh, a reasonable initiative i do think that this variation is still about equal and there is some discussion of this just as a side note in that chapter of the study but my recommendation will be the much more combative and fun d take c5 here <clears throat> the main point being is that black gets very good compensation after d takes c5 knight takes uh f4 e takes f4 g6 planning on going bishop g7 or bishop h6 and uh we'll, we'll check out the analysis more deeply when we get there uh and then there's the the immediate bishop f4 there are some nuances to, to that move order specifically the main one is that after something like, let's say, c5, e3, knight c6, c3, if, if black still goes knight f6 here, then white has the move knight d2. Again, this very rapid development of the queen side. The main point being that, again, queen b6 doesn't have as much bite. And that's sort of like... Principally, black is sort of incentivized to go queen b c5, queen b6 in a lot of lines because one of the main downsides to bishop f4 is that b2 is weak. Similar in the Slav, one of the main downsides to bishop f5, developing that light squared bishop, is that b7 is a little loose. And so white typically tries to exploit this by c4, queen b3 in a lot of lines, and it's the same thing in the London, which is a reverse Slav. Black typically goes c5, queen b6 to... Both try to exploit the fact that white has not elected to go c4, so black can go c5 much more easily. And because white has developed this f4 bishop, queen b6 to b2 develops some pressure. So we see kind of like this, this evolution where white tries to develop the queen side earlier and earlier, starting with d4, d5, knight f3, bishop f4. Uh, knight c6 first they went c3 that wasn't fast enough then they went knight b to d2 mm, I'm not, i don't want to say not fast enough but just different and then they started to go to bishop f4 so that uh in the case of an early knight f6 white could go very quick with with knight b to d2 when queen b6 does basically nothing we're going to circumvent that by going queen b6 one move earlier. And since white is delaying knight f3, we're going to delay knight f6. And after queen b3, c4, queen c2. Um, we actually still can't go bishop f5 right away because there's this very brutal and beautiful trap. Queen takes f5, queen takes b2, queen d5. This is one consequence of us not being able to insert knight f6 and knight f3 is that d5 is hanging. Queen a1, queen b5. Very powerful, exclam. Threatening queen b7 with this nasty double attack and also stopping the white queen from either taking on b1 or exiting uh, via b2. And this, yeah, this is a problem. But there is a nuance here. So after queen b6, queen b3, c4, queen c2, our main line is going to be e5, exclam, this gambit move. And uh, the first point being that we're just gambiting a pawn for rapid development of our pieces. So, it, for instance, just d takes e5. We'll follow up with, uh, well, I'll show you, bishop f5 now. The, the second point being that after queen takes f5, there's actually a piece in the way, and queen takes d5 is not possible anymore. So white is forced to go here. And then we'll get into the specifics of this variation when, when it comes time. But those are the main movers that we're talking about here. And it's all based around how white decides to deal with the black idea of c5 and queen b6. Okay, so let's talk about the old main line first. Whoopsies. So d4, d5, knight f3. Once white goes knight f3, we're okay to go knight knight f6 bishop f4 c5 again we take up uh the opportunity to introduce the the central tension given that white hasn't yet e3 knight c6 very principled straightforward development and then this old move c3 again we'll talk about five knight b to d2 in a second and we go queen b6 
<clears throat> Very strong move hitting b2. And white typically goes queen b3, trying to encourage the positionally desirable for white. Queen takes b3, a takes b3. When white gets a uh, pawn moved closer towards the center and this open a file, we're not going to oblige. And we go a uh, very strong move c4. And again, white will not generally want to take here. Queen takes b6, a takes b6. It's very hard to stop b5, b4, even if white tries, for instance, with knight b to d2, b5, a3. Black can still go b4 because uh, the pawn on a3 is pinned. So ill-advised idea for white. White almost exclusively goes uh, queen c2. And black's main point is this move bishop f5. Otherwise, this move c4 would be a little bit strategically risky because we you don't typically remove tension like this unless there's a, a point. And unfortunately, like... It's only a matter of time before white gets this strategically strong move b3. And for instance, let's just say we played like some lame move like e6 and white goes b3. Because b takes c4 is a threat, we're sort of committed to going c takes b3. And after a takes b3, white has exchanged the a pawn for the c pawn, opened up the a file, and is ready down the line to go c4 himself when... This tension would be very annoying because D takes C4, white would be ready to capture back with a pawn and then would have a massive advantage in the center. So the only reason we're going C4 is because it forces the queen to the C2 square and we have this bishop F5 move, which then further boots the queen to the C1 square. And white really doesn't have time in this variation to go to go uh, with this B3 move. So my recommendation in this position is to just go knight H5 immediately. This one has the upside that, first of all, we're just going to get the two bishops in the main line, which goes bishop g3, knight takes g3, h takes g3, g6, knight b to d2, bishop g7. I think black is just a little bit better. Uh, we have the two bishops, easy development, a little bit of extra central space, and uh, in 14 games that have reached us in the database, black has won five and lost two and drawn the rest. I don't think uh, there are many problems here. If white tries to keep the bishop instead, like with bishop g, or uh, excuse me, with bishop g5 or bishop e5, there are problems because we get f6 for free. So for instance, bishop e5, f6, and now bishop e3 allows e5, which is very bad for white. We're going to take this bishop anyway, and we've been given f6 and e5 kind of for free. Black has a, a big center, bishop e2, knight takes g3, h takes g3, h takes g3, excuse me. Castles long, for instance, looks very good for for black, who has the two bishops, this big old center, and uh, aggressive intentions. Similarly, bishop g5, f6, bishop h4 is possible as well. In this one, we flick in g5, but it's basically the same thing. We go e5, and black is much better. There are extra lines in the notes. I'm just trying to keep this sort of cursory to keep the video relatively short but again as always i'll link to the study down below check out the deets there for more information but that's basically the old main line with 5c3 and we'll see why uh you can kind of see why white tried to move to something else in in this variation black just gets very easy play with this c4 bishop f5 idea and then knight h5 is just a good move in my opinion so let's go back uh, let's go to the next chapter, d4, d5, knight f3, knight f6. Again, white goes knight f3, we can go knight f6, bishop f4, c5, e3, knight c6. And now white rushes to develop a little bit with 5 knight uh, b to d2. And again, the point is something like queen b6 now, we can just go d takes c5 in this position because queen takes b2, rook b1 is now possible instead of instead of uh, losing a rook. Yeah, and I investigated this position a bit. Queen takes a2 is very risky, by the way. And uh, not only is this very complicated, it's also just really hard to understand this position. Black's queen is still not out of the water here. There are sort of these lingering threats and ideas of, of uh, knight e5 ganging up on this, this unfortunately pinned knight here. And 
the moment you you move the queen, there's also sort of annoying ideas that involve how do I make blue? There we go. C4 busting open the center. Wesley So has had a couple of games. So has Duda. The, uh, Dingley ran a ton of very strong grandmasters that played G6 successfully. It is sort of scary after this E4 move. For instance, D takes E4. Bishop E5, hitting the queen, queen A5, and then there's this very scary piece sacrifice with castles. E takes F3, bishop takes C6 check, B takes C6, queen takes F3, hitting here, hitting here. The lines are opening, whoop, the lines are opening. Very complicated, I've added analysis here. I'm honestly still not sure what's going on here. Wouldn't recommend it. So in this position, I found this other move, satisfactory, knight H5, which also is just fun. And again, white can try and keep this bishop in a variety of ways, bishop e5, all of these moves. I would encourage you to check the notes for those. Similar situation, we're just going to attack it, like for instance, bishop g5, h6 in this case, or bishop e5, e6, c3, f6, just to give you a quick breakdown. On... Uh, this one, very similar to other variations we've kind of played. Eventually, we're just going to lop this thing off. <clears throat> and castle with a very reasonable position. But uh, the main move here is D takes C5. So I think white is kind of reasoning, okay, we have this option to grab a pawn. It's not super easy for black to get it back. And uh, we're kind of exploiting maybe this lost time by going knight f6, h5, knight takes f4 to, to grab this pawn and open up the game a little bit. So this has been sort of the main battleground of this variation. And it's been, knight h5 has been played by a lot of really strong grandmasters in the last couple of years. Alexander Grishchuk has three games. Fabiano Caruana played it. Ivan Cheparinov. All these guys are very good theoreticians too so i trust that if they're playing knight h5 it's because they've researched it very very thoroughly and and decided it was good um abdu Sadarov, our 2021 shocker world rapid champion has also played this move five times in the last year and won four out of five games so it's not too bad and uh basically what we got so far is a shattered white's shattered structure here a little bit doubled f pawns double c pawns and black has the two bishops, which is not too bad. In general, we're going to go g6 and either go bishop g7 or bishop h6. In the main line, we go bishop h6 first to provoke g3, and then we just go back. And we're going to seek to regain this pawn somehow, sometimes with queen a5. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we're going to try and open up the game usually. If white goes c3 to counteract this bishop on g7, we have the option of going d4. In some cases, when white tries to keep the pawn with knight b3, we have a5, a4, a3, or we have a5, a4, and then b6. But we'll get into the details. So the main move is c3 here. I think white reasons that because this bishop is generally going to land here, c3 is going to be necessary anyway, so why not play it first? And we go bishop h6, key move first, because uh, after g3, white has fairly ugly darks or light squares, excuse me, on the king side. And eventually, after, for instance, castles, knight b3, bishop g7, we head back. So we give white g3 for free instead of just bishop g7 immediately, but we argue that it's not a helpful move long term. And only a couple games have reached this position. <coughs> The the highest level one was Aronian against Abdu Sadarov in the FIDE Grand Swiss, and Aronian went h4. <coughs> Excuse me, still kind of sick. <laughs> um, or maybe I'm just sick of analyzing the London system at this point, hard to say. And I think the best move here is, I believe Abdu Sadarov played bishop g4, but I think the best move here is a5 immediately. And there's a cute point that h5 doesn't really work yet because of this. A4, kick in the knight, bishop g4, threatening to just lop this thing off. And if here, we can go here. And after g takes h7, king to h8, c takes d4, we have this massive check on 
a5 and queen d2 loses the knight to bishop takes f3 and knight d2 is obviously impossible because of this pin so so white has to to play this horrible move and after rook a6 we have a massive massive attack well worth the the pawns not recommended so probably after a5 White should go something like bishop e2, but then after b6, c takes b6, queen takes b6, I think we have pretty good compensation. Again, a4 is coming, b2 is hanging, the game is opening up for the two bishops. Uh, I would encourage you guys to analyze this further to sort of understand these positions, but yeah, great compensation. Instead, maybe bishop g2 is natural, and now that... Uh, well, one thing to understand here is, like, for instance, if if we go back a move, instead of bishop g7, Alexander Grushchuk tried um, a5 against uh, Nihal Sarin, but after a4, I think the problem is b6, bishop b5 is sort of annoying, because after knight a7, white can lock it down with c6, and so... It's worth waiting on a5, bishop g7, and now after bishop g2, I think a5 is much stronger, because after a4, b6, white does not have bishop b5 anymore. And there's this also this very cute nuance that after c takes b6, we should go rook b8. Not queen b6, queen d5, because uh, not that clear, for instance, after this, locking it down. So we just wait a move until we're doubled on the b-file, so that after, like, castles queen b6, uh, there isn't really time for this anymore because bishop e6 would lose this knight on b3. Queen b3, you know. Queen b5, excuse me, bishop takes b3. And so white tries something else, but uh, for instance, this white just can't hold it all together. The knight's pinned all the ways. I think b2 is probably going to hang at some point. Queen, this white's going to, excuse me, Black will win the pawn back on b5 and uh, just have a much more solid and advantageous pawn structure. Black is better here for sure. If we go back a little bit, there are other options. E takes f4, g6. White does not have to go c3 necessarily, though it probably is the best move. Bishop d3 is the most natural move perhaps, but it's kind of lazy. Black can go either bishop g7 c3 d4 immediately opening up the game for the two bishops which is good but also queen a5 just regaining the pawn because c3 is not in there's no b4 and because this queen pins the knight there's no queen knight b3 to defend and so we'll just take that pawn back and be better again two bishops extra center pawn better structure the good stuff bishop b5 is better i actually have this in a blitz game like a half hour after I finished the analysis and queen c7 is a nice move here hitting hitting this pawn and after g3 bishop g7 hitting b2 c3 castles after castles black can go d4 immediately which is nice I think this is just good for black again we have the two bishops in better structure once we went a pawn back not not uh, recommended for white so after d4 possibly better is this move but we can snap here first as uh, uh, as an in-between move. And then after bishop e4, I think this is also possibly just uh, slightly better for black, who has the, the two bishops in better structure for nothing and still a little bit of pressure on the queen side. So I would say that's the basic rundown of the more modern move order with bishop f4, c5, e3, knight c6, knight b to d2. We go knight h5, lop this baby off, g6, bishop g7, or bishop h6. You guys get the idea. So, zooming all the way back out, white can start with bishop f4 instead. And instead of delaying knight f3, and again, the main point here would be something like, uh, let's say, knight c6, c3, um, and again, white could transpose back to our old main line with knight f3, knight f6, but that's not really the point. If black were to go something like knight f6, then white would play uh, five knight d2 exclam. Again, prioritizing the, de the development of white's queen side to make queen b6 hurt less. 
And in this case, uh, specifically queen b6, queen b3, c4, as in our old main line, does basically nothing since after queen c2, we don't have bishop f5. Queen takes f5, queen takes b2, rook b1 just loses a piece for black. So that's the main point of two bishop f4 with regards to our choice of variations is that white is like ultra gearing up for c5, queen b6, making it do pretty much nothing. So in accordance, after bishop f4, we're kind of also going to delay knight f6 and play queen b6 a move earlier. So in this case, we're going to go queen b6 on move 4 instead. And same thing, queen b3. Same thing again, c4, queen c2. And again, like I spoke about in the intro, bishop f5 is not possible here because if queen takes f5, queen takes b2, queen takes d5, queen takes a1, queen takes b5, or queen to b5, Hitting here, like queen a2, for instance, trying to get your queen out would lose immediately to queen takes b7 with this double attack. And white black's king is just way too weak there. So if you go something like castles instead, white is just winning after bishop takes c4, when now the queen literally is completely locked out. Let me highlight that. Unfortunately, um, as far as I can tell... Leeches does not import arrows anymore and highlights, which is sad. Or chess base doesn't export them anymore. Unless I, Maybe I need to export them a different way. Look into it. Side note. Um, yeah, and the queen just can't come out. Even like desperate stuff, like black's main move is e5 here. And white just lets him take the bishop. Because after e takes f4, castles, f takes e3, f takes e3. For instance, knight f6 was uh, Grachev, Gelfand, Tom Memorial, Blitz, 2008. There's just simply no remedy to knight d2 trapping the queen. And indeed, knight d2, queen takes f1, king takes f1, was completely winning for white in the aforementioned game. So we have this wrinkle. So queen c2, we can't go bishop f5, that's dumb. But we have this awesome move, e5, exclam. This is the kind of move when you're like over the board, you like slam it down. Or like you take that pawn, you like screw it into the e5 square, you know? Just like stare at him. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, and so we're not, the first point is that we're just kind of rushing our development. We're sacrificing this e-pawn for quick development. For instance, something like uh, bishop takes e5. Our main line is bishop f5 now. Queen c1, knight takes e5. D takes e5. We grab the bishops, and then we offer this gambit sort of for good, hoping to gain more development. So we've gained knight f6 and bishop f5 for free. Very quick, we've opened the, the e-file and the f-file towards white's king. This position's terrifying for white, by the way. But yeah, we also see the second main point after bishop takes f5 is that after bishop f5, again, like I mentioned before, queen f5, queen takes b2, there's no queen takes d5 because there's a bishop in the way. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Yeah, so let's look at this line first. Bishop e5, bishop f5, queen c1. Knight takes e5, d takes e5, f6. Again, like we're playing with the maximum energy here, trying to be uh, as principled and direct as possible. And um, I would encourage you guys to look at these variations. I'm not going to go through all of them because it's kind of detailed, but black gets very good play here. Most people have declined this with e6. And uh, yeah, you can pretty much just go like e6, bishop c5. Knight f3, and then bishop e6, f5, knight f6, castles long, for instance, or castle short. Black has very good play here. And uh, is not even down a pawn for it. But yeah, cr critical. Most people, I think, in this position have gone like uh, just knight e7, but I think it's better to go f5, knight f6. It's a more active development. You have the f4 break, for instance. So consider that. But uh, again, just fun variation after like e takes f6, knight takes f6, knight f3, bishop c5, bishop e2, castles, castles. We have this very powerful move, queen d6 here, which uh, first of all, eyes h2 and just swings over to the, the king side where all the action is, but also gets ready to meet this idea of b3 for white with b5. So just bolstering the center instead of having to play like this sort of ugly looking C takes B3 move. 
And for instance, like the most obvious move for white here, at least in my opinion, is knight b to d2, but it's just not good. Black can already lunge in with knight g4. And the main threat is not actually on h2. It's like this, this complex here that's a problem. For instance, h3, knight takes f2 is already exceedingly dangerous. Rook takes f2, bishop takes e3. This is the problem with knight b to d2. The queen no longer guards the e3 square. And we have like a lot of brewing threats here. Um, just one line, for instance, that is kind of nice. For instance, king f1, queen g3. Ooh. Queen e1, only move. Bishop takes h3. G takes h3. Queen takes h3. King g1. Rook f6. Death. I think the only move here is queen to e1. So bishop takes e3, queen to e1. Queen f1 is not as good. White needs to be able to go knight to uh, f1 to try and kick this bishop. Queen b6, knight f1. Bishop takes f2 check. Queen takes f2, queen b2. Total mess, but I think black is uh, for choice here. Once c3 hangs, again, like this rook comes to natural uh, development. And we have, uh, let's see a rook and three pawns for, for two minor pieces, and white's development is still kind of discombobulated. Maybe we can get these center pawns rolling. Black is better. <coughs> so again, check the notes for more on bishop takes f5, bishop takes e5, bishop f5, queen c1, knight e5, d e5, f6, but that's the main idea. Instead, white should, well, I don't know if white should, but white has generally gone d takes e5 here. <clears throat> Sorry, still sick again. Yeah, it's obvious now, isn't it? Uh, and again, we use this the fact that there's a pawn on e5 and queen takes d5 is not possible to go bishop f5, queen c1. And now again, maximum violence, maximum energy, we go g5. And of course, the point is that bishop takes g5, knight takes e5, and eventually black might stick a knight in here. And after knight d3 check, bishop takes d3, bishop takes d3. For instance, if there's a knight on f3, uh, it's going to be very hard for white to get the king to safety because this bishop on d3 will cut off white's castling rights. Most people have gone bishop g3 here and declined, but then we insist <laughs> with h4. And white has two sort of choices here. h4 is not very good because of g4, in my opinion. When uh, these two... Pieces are kind of both competing for the same square because f3 is, is no longer usable. And white's best might be knight e2, bishop g7, hitting e5, knight d4, hitting the bishop, knight g to e7, protecting. And uh, yeah, even after bishop e2, knight e5, again, we have this threat of knight, knight, uh, well, let's just put the moves on the board. We have this threat of, of knight d3 check. And yeah, bishop e5, bishop e5. Black's not really down any material here. Has the two bishops, has more space pretty much everywhere. And castling is sort of risky probably because of g3, for instance. Uh, queen g6 incoming. Black can castle long. Yeah, looks great. Instead, something like castles, but uh, I'm, I wouldn't be optimistic about white's chances in this position after this either. Again, we can castle long if we want. It looks... Uh, quite tasty so maybe h3 instead bishop g7 again if we can just recover this pawn i think black will be in great shape regardless knight f3 and then uh there have been a lot of moves here knight g to e7 knight h6 like i chose and just g4 immediately but uh i kind of like knight h6 in the event of knight d4 it protects the bishop but there's also this idea to go h4 bishop h2 g4 and be able to recapture on g4 with the knight which is is pretty strong so for instance knight b to d2 h4 bishop h2 g4 just strong attacking chess opening up lines and this uh knight on g4 is very powerful there's there's ideas of exploding something on e3 or f2 Again, we can just regain our pawn, or if this knight ever hops into d4, for instance, we can just grab the two bishops and ruin white's castling rights with knight takes h2 as well. And uh, this is the game Gadakomsky versus Vega Gutierrez, which was an online blitz game. I think it might have been a title Tuesday game in 2019. And 
Uh, Komsky chose knight d4, and here I think knight takes d4 is just very strong. If e takes d4, white runs into some problems here with f6. The problem being is that e takes d4 exposes f2 even further down the diagonal. So like after f6, f takes e5 would be a very significant threat because d takes e5 is not possible because of queen takes f2 and knight e3 mate. Uh, yeah, you can just see how like all of the lines are opening and it's just very hard for white to get the queen or the king to safety. Like white's queen really wants to come to c2 so that white can get the hell out of here, but it can't. And knight h2, rook h2, it would keep the, the king on e1 pretty much forever. Meanwhile, black can just go castles long, f6, put a rook on e8, just start messing stuff up. Uh, instead, c takes b, d4 is better, but knight h2, uh, rook h2, and then f6 is very similar. And I, I just think black is much better in all these positions. Again, the these it's just terrifying to try and play these positions for white. I mean... Uh, there are places where white's equal, like I think, you know, maybe here, here is equal, despite the fact that it's a little tough. Knight d2, f6, knight e7, um, maybe something like this is about equal, but I don't know very many people who would choose to be white here, even if, even if that's true. It's just very dangerous, and it, it's much more fun to play, to play this type of stuff as black than as white, but... So that is the main tour of the more modern two bishop f4, c5, e3, knight c6, c3, queen b6, queen b3, c4, queen c2, e5. Uh, very new line. It's not covered in any of the books, and uh, Le Quang Liem avoids this, this move order entirely. And so I think people have very good chances to score here until white players catch up. It is worth noting that this this move order with two c five does allow two e four, which is a reversed Al Albin counter gambit with uh, White having the free move Bishop f four. I think uh, there are a lot of playable options here. It is possible to just go into the reversed Albin with something like this and play g six and survive. But like Knight Knight b five d six stuff comes pretty quick. It's sort of dangerous, and if you're probably going to see this in like one out of 1,000 games you play in in, uh, in chess. Maybe never. So why? I, I, so I, I mostly focused on the move knight c6 in in the file. So check that out if you're if you're interested. Okay, and so the last real option we have to consider, which is sort of like London adjacent, is this idea. Whoops! Why do I always do that? This option of going to knight f3, knight f6, and then c3, delaying bishop f4. So it's like a weird delayed London. Or or a more proper reversed Slav after, after c5. And yeah, 2c3 is really designed to kind of dissuade c5, or at least get different positions, um, since white can take here now. And c3 is a more useful move than bishop f4, if you're intending to take on c5 and keep it. So in order to keep things consistent, I'm going to recommend c5 anyway. I think it's still a good move. It's still the main move. It's still the most interesting move. But just understand that, you know, white can, can take and play to try and keep the pawn. It doesn't work out that well. e6, bishop f, uh, e6, excuse me, b4 is consistent. And then again, we start chipping away with a5. And white generally goes e3. Queen b3 is also possible, but we just go b6 and start uh, all of the usual, the usual stuff. Now something like c takes b6, queen takes b6, bishop e3, queen b7, and it's hard for white to, to keep the pawn in any sensible way. Again, check the notes. Uh, e3 is the main move, and then we get this super bizarre... Uh, it's almost like a... It's not exactly a note boom, so it's like a pseudo note boom reversed, where a takes b4, a takes b4, b6, and again there's the idea of c takes b6, bishop b4. We're just chipping away at the, the, these pawns on the queen side. White goes bishop b5 check, bishop d7, bishop takes d7, knight b takes d7, and then this sort of signature note boom style move a4, intending to meet b takes c5 with b5 when. White has these sort of ridiculous uh, double connected passers on the queen side, and black gets these sort of double connected passers on the 
in the center. And this is the position that Laquang Liam has decided to reach as white. I can't find an advantage for white here. He really doesn't either. He kind of labels all of his end positions unclear, which is very fair assessment, as you can see. But again, as far as like a modern sort of principled, aggressive repertoire against the London, I don't think people should be too, too sad with these positions. And if you want to get really ridiculous, there are uh, options that start with G5 immediately here. Which is just kind of insane. The main idea, of course, is that if if white, if black takes, we're just going to go here and then take on on G2 and white's king is never safe anywhere. So after something like this, the, the main focus here of this G5 move is that it makes it a little bit hard for white to, to castle because he would be facing down G4, queen C7, hitting here, and then H5, H4, for instance. And so this kind of strands white's king in the center after queen C7 or queen B8. I've given analysis of this this option in the notes you can check that out there's also a, a clever idea of wesley so that i took a look at uh the idea is rook a7 intending queen to a8 building up pressure on this thing and kind of just blockading the pawns so something like uh this happened in the so game bishop d6 to c7 is a very critical idea to understand this in this variation by the way just completely stopping any sort of <clears throat> uh, advancement of these pawns, locking it down forever. Um, but there is there is a, a refinement here in that white can go a5 right away. I do not recommend this variation for black. And uh, Laquang Liam gives a very sort of cute idea here. Uh, after castles, knight to a3, exclam. If rook b8, then there's uh, b6... Knight takes b6, trying to exploit this pin. Knight to b5, winning in exchange. Because we're hitting this bishop and this rook at the same time. Again, not, not to be recommended. Uh, I think the safest variation in my, my recommendation might be to just go bishop d6 immediately if you just want something relatively easy. Bishop b2, castles, castles, bishop c7. Just locking them down. Blockading these pawns, making sure they never advance again. I think it's a fair idea. And after knight b uh, to d2, we just go queen e7. And we're ready to start maybe thinking about e5, maybe thinking about c4, or rook a7, rook f to a8. And just to, to show you what kind of stuff could go wrong, very natural move, bishop c3, intending to go a5, can be met by e5 immediately. And unfortunately, like e4 is the usual counter to this when black will go d4. And here it's much stronger because the bishop's on c3 and it loses a move. So something like this when we're ready to challenge knight c4 with knight d6 and possibly go f5 or get our own c-pawn rolling, which would be very terrifying for, for white. We've, we've blockaded white's pawns. And that's really the majority of this variation is understanding like that it's kind of majority versus majority. At some point, black is going to need to go c4 and e5 if you want to make progress. And if, at some point, white is going to need to try and organize some sort of a5 push if, if white wants to make progress. And unfortunately, it's very hard for both sides. So there's going to be a lot of maneuvering here. But something like queen c2. Um, and queen c2 is a very important move, by the way, keeping an eye on a4. Something like queen e2 might give a little bit of extra power to rook a7, rook f to a8, because a4 would be weaker. And queen c2 also prepares to meet e5 with e4, d4, knight c4, both guarding uh, the c4 square and preparing e4. So this is a strong move. Rook a7, h3, rook f to a8, e4. I think this position is highly unclear. This is both my main line and Laquang Liam's main line. Uh, we're at move 17. I would leave it here, but I think at this point you guys know what you're sort of playing for. Advancing in the center somehow, uh, perhaps playing on, on the king side, avoiding getting forked by e5, and uh, blockading these pawns. So that is the general overview of my modern attacking repertoire against the London. Again, Study is down below if you want to check that out. Also down below is a link to donate to the channel if you are into it. Um, this video took me all weekend, for instance, 
and it takes me about an hour to record and an hour to make a thumbnail. And so like these sort of long form videos, uh, uh, do donations might help keep me going. You know, I it not required. I do this for the love of it. I do this to build the community, but I'm, I'm giving, uh, the option of donations. Um, if you guys want to, it, if you don't want to, at the very least, hit me with a like, hit me with a subscribe, that stuff, hit me with a comment, turn on notifications, that stuff really does help YouTubers. So it's not, people don't beg for it because it's just like, it is what it is. It like really helps. So if, if you like these kinds of videos, if you stumble upon it, searching YouTube for the London system or whatever, you make it this far, please like, please subscribe. Thank you guys very much. Um, I hope you dig it. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this repertoire in the comments. As usual, if you have questions about the opening, shoot me a message below. It has been a real delight. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.